inside the 2020 Dodge Durango SRT. Now, before I get into it, here's a quick compilation of Mark complaining about various FCA interiors. This looks like they went to a fifth grade class and said, let's design our first car interior today and we'll give you a gold star. This feels extremely cheap. And I know this is an old platform, but you look at the door panels, you look at the fabric choices and this horrible looking plastic chrome trim, it's a hard pill to swallow. Uh, I can't even make a lap. <laughs> How's the uh, ride back there, Scott? It's horrendous. You said there's a lot of road noise? Yeah, I need some ear plugs. Now you do have Chrysler, or I'm sorry, FCA's beautiful plastic chrome trim uh, that just adorns all the vents uh, right around the center stack area. I mean, it just looks great in bright light too. I mean, it just reflects that light right in your eyes the way that you'd like. The other thing that's nice about Chrysler vehicles these days is they include this plastic clock that looks like they pulled it out of a gumball machine. My follically challenged colleague is correct. There are certain issues with this interior, namely some of the plastics used on the center console, the switch gear. A lot of these plastics are better in a Happy Meal toy than the $75,000 FCA product. And that's a problem. However, Dodge does a good job, or at least attempts, to distinguish this from the other more mundane Durangos. You have carbon fiber trim pieces, you have leather piping, uh, leather wrap dash, these tremendous SRT seats. They're huge, they fit all body types, they're all Kantara on leather. They are a very comfortable item and they are near identical to what you'd find on a Challenger or Charger. There's a lot of good in this interior and I can't stress that enough. Onto the practicality side of the equation. This is a honest to God three row SUV, meaning real human beings fit in the third row not just munchkins. The second row has a very comfortable pair of captain's chairs. When you fold all the seats down, this cabin is cavernous. You can fit all sorts of knickknacks, goodies, gym equipment, all of that will fit in the back of this car. It is very usable. The door carts are huge. They fit a full-size water bottle. The center console is great. There are tons of USB ports, 12 volt charger outlets. Because this thing does the day-to-day -day so well, it can have this great Jekyll and Hyde personality that is so rare in this segment. Lastly, before we head to the shop, let's talk about the audio system and infotainment. It's best described as meh. The Harman Kardon unit itself is typical FCA. It's not class leading. It's not hyper offensive. Yes, there's some distortion. The frequency response is muddled. The bass is too heavy and the mids are basically non-existent. But you have V8 sounds, so who cares? The infotainment itself, it's Uconnect, it's the previous generation. You, know, you have physical controls, it's not that slow to react, you have Apple CarPlay, it's inoffensive. In fact, it never impedes your enjoyment of this vehicle, and in many cases, that's all you can ask for. So, with all of that said, let's head to the shop. Under the hood of the Dodge Durango SRT, this is a 2020, and I know you've already done a video on this. I did. I had this in the air with Scott, and if you want to check out the underbody, go watch that video, but it hasn't changed since 300 BC, so we're going to talk about the motor instead. Yes, yeah, so this is a 6.4 liter, or 392 in Freedom units. It's a Hemi, it's an iron block, it's got aluminum heads, a forged crankshaft, and forged pistons. It's a genuinely impressive engine. It makes 470 horsepower, and in some variations, 470 foot-pounds of torque. Wow, I feel my testosterone levels surging right now. It's tough. It it's, is tough. It's T-U-F-F -F tough. If, will it bring back some follicles? Maybe, maybe. You'll get so much testosterone, you'll have a even hairier back. Oh my God, I, did, I already have, uh, I basically I'm on these weekly appointments. It costs more than a car payment on this thing. When Mark goes shirtless, he looks like a lemur. <laughs> This thing makes me, I'm raging right now, just ready to drive. I want to punch a hole through the wall. <laughs> so it's a, this motor to me reminds me of an LS, right? It's push rod. It's got cylinder deactivation, but to my understanding, it doesn't have the reliability problems with lifters that the LSs have. According to Bondron, and I talked to the shop, they, they pound these things around all week, all day long for their drive programs. And it's over a hundred degrees there. They have almost no failures mechanically. But the two big problems with this engine are A, fuel economy. It's <laughs> literally like setting your wallet on fire. The other one is cooling. 
all 392 engines or the Hemis that aren't the Hellcats do not have the superior cooling of those engines. When Bondurant runs the regular chargers around with the 392s, they run into a ton of cooling problems. Not just oil, but water temp issues. The Hellcats don't. I just think it's the way they manage cooling. They don't have the extra coolers. They don't have the bigger radiator. They don't radiator. really need to. Most of these people that are going to buy this are not going to be taking this to a track anyway. What about me, Mark? Well, yeah. Okay, <laughs> if you're a... I, okay, I'm not even going to say it, but probably the traditional public on the street will not have any heat issues with this. And they have... Look, there's holes here. <laughs> so the heat just escapes. The other thing to bring up, I know, I know, I know all you care about is Hemi power. Yeah but is the all-wheel drive system. Mm. Unlike the regular V6 Durango, 70% of the power goes to the rear. I don't want to talk about that. Let's get this on the road and see what it's like to drive it. <laughs> oh, I'm allergic to this fucking thing. Did you put the garbage can in here too? <laughs> Mark, we're in the 2020 SRT Durango. Let's just get this out of the way. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty badass. You know, it's been about two years since I've been in, in this thing, and I did a video on it, and I thought to myself, I'm like, this has got to be the funnest three-row SUV you can possibly buy. And uh, getting back in it again, I, agree. I still feel the same way. This thing is the 80s action movie of three row SUVs. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's loud. You know, it's purely childish, but you know, you're, you're having a good time despite its many, many flaws. Oh, <laughs> there are a lot of flaws here. Definitely a lot of flaws. But we're not here to talk about the flaws, Jack, because FCA has paid me $687,000 today to say that this is the... <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your intelligent thought? No, they didn't pay me anything. This, Once you get in here and you start to drive it like a fucking idiot, like you do... Oh, naturally. Uh, uh, you, it makes it completely makes 100% sense why you'd buy this and why you'd want this out of pretty much anything else. If you are angry about life, if you are tell me, Mark, full of protein powder, um, if you just got done lifting weights and your spotter disappeared and you dropped the the whole bar on yourself, you get in this, you mash the pedal down, and you show everybody how much of a prick you can be. The fact that I've got in here, I've lost 12 inches already, <laughs> just just as you've been driving. I, I'm, I'm a Ken doll now. <laughs> but you do you do really enjoy this. No, it's the thing I said about this earlier, and I'll say it again, is this is, has a tremendous Jekyll and Hyde personality. You can drive like a total asshole like I'm doing right now, which I always do. <laughs> but when you put it into auto, when you're taking around your kids or your many misses because you drive an SRT product, yes, it's quiet. It's reasonably comfortable and it fulfills the duty of a daily very, very well. Yes, you can do everything in here. You have the, the room, you have three rows, you have the capacity, you have towing capability, you have the speed, one of the best transmissions in the segment. It's tuned wonderfully and the exhaust sounds great. And when you uh, decide to be a child again, you can uh, configure your your launch control to uh, whatever you want it to be, and then uh... <laughs> do that. It's got a it's got this great personality, despite being enormous. It has got great body control. The brakes are good. There are very few things wrong with this outside of its kind of Durango esque problems. The interior isn't that good. You know, it does drone a little bit due to the exhaust, but I mean, it's got a great personality and that's something that's missing in so many SUVs. Yeah, I think that really just kind of sums it up. <laughs> this is one of those transmissions that's better used in automatic because the way that the, there's such a lag in the tachometer to know where you're at, so you're always hitting fuel cutoff, and I just found I put it in automatic mode. 
the ability to change all your drive modes is really nice because you can change steering, transmission performance, engine performance, and of course the dampers, which would be my only complaint about this if there is one. It does ride really good. It is super quiet and it helps when you have this, you know, the, the suede headliner that helps to absorb a lot of sound, but um, I feel like it needs an extra soft mode, like a real touring mode. Um, even in normal, it feels a little bit too rough for me for a vehicle like this, right? I know it's an SRT product. It's trying to be more firm, but when you're driving at 95% of the time around town, I'd like it to absorb pavement, bad pavement a little bit better. But other than that, I honestly, aside from like interior aesthetic, there's almost no complaints that I have about this aside from the obvious fuel economy issues. <laughs> so um, when you're driving around town, or driving like you would in an SRT product, you will not get more than 10. I don't care how you drive this, you're gonna get 10 miles per gallon if you're not doing long distance highway cruising. When you're on the highway, it will shift into whisper quiet four cylinder mode and you may be lucky and pick up 20 miles per gallon. Yeah, I don't see it happening. And personally, I hate the way four cylinder mode, the cylinder deactivation feels in this because it gets to the place where one, it's in too high of a gear and you're feeling that luggish hesitation that you don't want with a V8. It feels like, a, I mean, it does. It goes into like that four cylinder mode and it just doesn't feel right. So I immediately switch it over to custom or sport to turn that shit off and then, uh, then I lose all the fuel economy. <laughs> and today you're like, oh, just fill it up a little. So I put in, it was empty. I put in seven gallons and it, <laughs> it barely touched the quarter tank mark. I emptied the whole tank in less than 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a responsible purchase. I'm gonna get back to the 80s action movie thing. Objectively, there are flaws, but when you're enjoying it, when you're in the moment, you don't give a shit. That's a great time, Jack, to get into the final thoughts where I can really dissect this mastery. <laughs> Why the, the pros and cons of driving the Durango? <laughs> final thoughts on the Dodge Durango. Obviously, this is the second video on this vehicle, so you know pretty much everything you need to know. If you are looking for one of the most exciting and fun three-row SUVs on the market, this has to be it. It's got an amazing V8 that sounds good on the inside and the outside. The exhaust tone is great. The acceleration is super impressive. The transmission performance is top notch and the overall drivability is great. The all wheel drive system works. It always feels stable. You always feel in control and the ride quality is impressive for what it is as well. Although, like I said during the drive, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit too firm for me on the softest setting. But this was Jack's first drive in it, and he loved every minute of it. And I think if you had to have that family hauler, there's not too many vehicles that do what this does. It's got character. That's the main thing I'm gonna say. But what it lacks is refinement. It lacks some of the interior quality of its competitors, specifically in this price point. The seats are great, some of the materials are pretty good, but you still feel this sense of it's a cheap car tarted up to an extreme level. And that's typically what you see in my biggest knock on some of the FCA vehicles. I think they could do a better job, but this is probably one of the better Dodge examples of interior refinement. Like even the headliner looks amazing. Now, the biggest negative, the biggest negative, the biggest deal breaker, and I never say this, it's fuel economy. I mean, holy hell, did this thing eat fuel. I mean, literally we filled it up every time we were turning around, we were filling it up. And sometimes we, we just got to the point where I did not want to push down the throttle. I would just coast this thing everywhere because filling it up will, it will be as much as a car payment. And I think if you're okay with that reality, specifically when gas prices are on the lower end, oh boy, are you going to enjoy this? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>